folks, and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. Now, this is our fourth start trying to get this. Fourth time lucky. Uh, fourth time lucky trying to get this episode rolling this morning. So, we're having a really fantastic Monday. <laughs> now, before we get into our episode, as usual, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening or if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, and we're also chatting with uh, Kev today. Yeah. So, we haven't. Kev's back. Kev's back. We haven't spoken to him for a little while now. Um, but we are going to get stuck into refrigeration options for caravans. So, Kev, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Lauren. And Thank ben, I'm really well. Awesome. So you're over at our warehouse today, aren't you? That's right, yes. I'm over at the Toronto Warehouse in our making room. Yep. And, uh, yeah. You can't hear the forklift today, apparently, because I've got the microphone pointing in a different direction. Oh, right. Last time I think you could hear the thing beeping away in the background. Yeah. I just, I just heard a beep. We'll try and ignore it. We'll anyway. try and, yeah. But yeah. that's okay. It's a warehouse. It's a working warehouse. It is, yeah. Busy yeah. working warehouse. Busy working warehouse. So refrigeration for vans, for caravans particularly today, because I – well, neither you or I, Lauren, are caravanners. You, you've got a uh, like a, a van. Yeah, we've that you're got, yeah, like a, a, a camper like van. Like a camper van. Yeah, I'm a camper, so I use like chest freezers. Yeah. But caravan fridges are a little bit well, somewhat foreign to me. I know a bit about them, but I'm yeah. not firsthand experience. But yeah, Kev, on the other hand, is a uh, you're all over caravans, as as I think our listeners already know your background yeah. in in the caravan industry. So. We thought we'd just ask all our questions to you today because we don't really have any answers ourselves. So, yeah, car- generally caravans do come with a fridge though, right? When you That's buy correct, them. yes, yes, yes. Campervans, camper vans, motorhomes and some camper trailers will come with their own refrigeration. Uh, okay. Some of the more basic camper trailers probably won't. Um, some of the more upmarket ones probably will, like something like a draw uh, compartment that you pull out, there'll be a chest fridge in there. Um, but you can get very basic camper trailers that are just basically a trailer with a tent on top. They won't. You have to go back to either installing your own or putting something in the back of your car. But just about everything else will have a fridge of some sort in there, yes. So if you were to get a second-hand caravan that um, already had a fridge in it, how would you determine sort of if and when an upgrade is necessary uh, on, on those fridges? Well, if you're looking at a second-hand caravan, um, I think the first thing you want to do, if you're buying it from a private buyer, I would suggest you ask them to turn the fridge on before you come to look at the van so you can actually see that it's actually working. Yeah. Um, that, that, that wouldn't matter whether it's a compressor fridge or an absorption-type fridge. You yeah. would sort of do that. If you're buying from a dealer, you would want to make sure, I mean, the dealer should check that it's working. Yeah. Um, but if you're wanting to upgrade it, it really depends on how old the fridge is. If you're getting out of an older van that's a really crappy little thing, you may want to look at it, upgrading it, because the fridges only last so long. Yeah. They do have a lifespan. And uh, if it's getting pre old, yes, you probably want to consider that as part of the deal of a dealer. Or if you're looking at a price, just consider that in your buy price that at some stage you would have to put a newer fridge in. Okay, that's good info. So a caravan fridge will generally, it's basically a, a small version of the fridge you've got at home, essentially. It's its usually mounted within the uh, the, the cabinetry of your caravan, whereas the, the fridges I'm used to are, are um, you know, you, you just your put chest, them in the booty, yeah. your chest fridge, you put them in the booty of your car and you, you lift the lid up. But I think the caravan fridges we're trying to refer to today are more the ones that have actually got a door that opens on the front and they mount in the cabinetry. They're like a mini bar that's fridge. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like you a bar can fridge. get freestanding caravan bridges. Now, when we talk about caravan fridge, we're talking about the type of cooling unit that's on it. Um, your fridge at home has a compressor which pumps a refrigerant around the cabinet and creates a cold environment, uh, whereas the caravan fridge, as you call a caravan fridge, it's actually an absorption type of fridge, which means it has no compressor. It works on heating a solution of um, ammonia and water, and I think there's another chemical in there too. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. But that creates a vapour. As the vapour travels around the um, tubes at the back of the fridge, it's then converted back into a liquid in a condenser. When this happens, it absorbs heat. Now, when I say it absorbs heat, it, it basically gets cold, but it actually takes heat out of the cabinet and will continue to do so in some cases until it freezes. This heat is then dispersed through cooling fins to the atmosphere or through vents to the outside of the fridge, <coughs> of the caravan, excuse me. Uh, and that's how it works. Now, the liquid then, or the liquid, the condensed liquid, then transfers back down to a small reservoir, which then flows back into a boiler, which is heated again, and the process is a continuous process. It doesn't stop while you pop the heat there. So it's heated by either a small gas flame or an electric element, either 240 volt or 12 volt. 
and there's no other moving parts on it. They just continue to work like that. And uh, that's what you would call a, a traditional camping fridge. Uh, sorry, caravan okay. fridge. So that's the, the absorption one is the traditional. That's your traditional. That's yeah. what, what you'll find will actually come in just about every van you buy new unless you actually specify, <coughs> excuse me again, unless you actually specify a, a compressor type fridge, yeah. So, so th- when people, sorry, Ben, cut you off yeah. there, but when people are after gas fridges, is that what they're talking about? The th- like yes, a yes, they're fridge. sometimes oh, called three-way fridges. Okay. Yeah. And you can get them in a chest type or an upright type. And as I said, I have seen uh, freestanding ones too, quite big ones yeah. that are in caravans with freezers on top. You look like just a, like a normal uh, household fridge, but uh, they're over 200 litre capacity. And uh, uh, most of them, however, are built into the cabinetry, mostly because they're a pretty basic um, body on them, not very attractive. Um, but so they build them into a cabinet and then they can also vent them properly too because you're creating a lot of heat. It seems odd that you're actually creating heat yeah. to create a cold environment, but that's how it works. That heat has to be created in the boiler and the gases do get hot and then they have to be cooled and that's when you get the, um, the, the heat being transferred to the outside and it goes through a, through a series of vents and even a little um, a flue above the, uh, the boiler to get rid of the gas fumes. That goes outside as well. Does that mean that a, a caravan, um, if it's hot sitting in the sun, hot inside the caravan, the fridge isn't going to work as efficiently? efficiently that, as that's efficiently, correct, sorry, yes. Because you need, you, you've got to get rid of that heat, don't you? That's correct. If you, I mean, basic physics, if you have a cold environment and a hot environment, the, um, you're going to sort of get this heat transfer. Mm. Now, if you have a hot environment and a hotter environment, you won't get that transfer. So you've got the cooling vents trying to get rid of the heat. But because it's going into an environment that's just as hot or even hotter, it's going to slow the refrigeration yeah, down. Okay. Yes. And that's, that's, I suppose, you might say is the downside of this type of fridge. You, in most of the cases, they'll work fine, but uh, you will find in some days that are particularly hot. And as you say, if that side of the van's in the direct sunlight, you might open the door and think, hmm, this doesn't seem to be quite so cold as it should be. It's not because there's anything wrong with the fridge. It just can't get rid of the heat at the back of the cabinet. Okay. So I've understood from a chest freezer point of view we, and, and talking general camping, I suppose, that a three-way fridge that runs off – I don't never thought about why it's called three-way. Is that because it's 12 volt, 24 volt and gas perhaps? It's uh, 12, sure. 240 and gas. 12, 240 and gas, sorry. Um, so my understanding of that is general and they, the technology always improves, but running on gas, uh, a chest – freezer is really efficient but you need to make sure you've got it really level in order for it to work but they're not as efficient running on uh 12 volt it's probably not as much of an issue on 240 is is a caravan fridge the same do they have 240 and 12 volt options as well like do they switch switch around yes mostly they do um they're generally the traditional three-way fridge you'll find that the um they will have 240 and gas uh, some of the early models didn't have the 12 volt, um, but the newer ones tend to. Now, when we talk about the the electric side of things, basically it's an element, just like in a in a electric um, oven or something like this. It's an element that will get hot, and they're sitting on the side of the boilers uh, in a tube. Now, one is a 12 volt element, one is a 240 volt element, uh, whereas the gas flame sits directly underneath the boiler. So the gas flame is probably the most efficient but it does create fumes and you do have to get rid of those fumes. Mm. Um, whereas the elements are transferring heat from them, from the actual element, to the boiler side on. So they don't work quite as well. Uh, 240 volt does. 12 volt is very much a maintenance cycle. If you were to start your fridge off from warm with a 12 volt, you'll find it would take a good part of you know, many hours for it to get cold because it okay. actually doesn't generate enough heat. They, they draw so much current that they have to keep the element small well, when I say small, I mean a lower wattage uh, compared to a 240 volt element. So therefore, it draws battery power, and there have been cases I've seen it where it actually draws more power than what the alternator on your car can can provide. Right. Uh, you've got the air conditioner on the car, your radio going, your fridge running in the back, and your battery that was slightly going down because it just can't produce that much power. Yeah, wow. uh, now, some cars, newer cars are probably better. That was an older car I had. But um, with the 12 volt, it's very much a maintenance cycle. So there's no thermostat on the 12 volt. It shouldn't be. Uh, I don't believe there is. The newer fridges may have them. I'm not sure. But there's no thermostat. So you're relying on the gas or 240 to get the fridge cold, uh, like when you're camping overnight or if you're on a site. And then when you want to move, you switch it over to 12 volt, and the 12 volt maintains that temperature. Okay. okay. So that's that's good to know. That so, and good consideration, you know, to make sure you have good solar, like good 
you know, yeah. if you're running from battery and that sort of thing. Yeah, because that 12 volt element of a three way fridge isn't doesn't just revert to being like the the efficient 12 volt compressor mm. fridges. It's a totally nah. different setup inside. It's different different setup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in terms of obviously caravan fridges will be sort of upright and have that open door like a you know like a mini traditional fridge. Apart from the aesthetics of it. Is there any advantage to choosing a caravan specific fridge over, you know, your standard 12 volt, 240 volt chest fridge? Um, well, you can, I mean, your, your chest fridge is normal for camping, whereas your caravan fridge is an upright. It, people like to have that traditional upright fridge. It fits into a cabinet, it's easy to use, whereas a chest fridge, you've got to have an opening above it to open the door, the, the lid, you know. Mm. Um, and also, a chest fridge, you've still got to vent that heat out of the the cabinet, whereas if the fridge is fitted into a cabinet, it's vented correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sealed off from the rest of the cabinet, and that's most important because if the heat can get around the cabinet, it will also slow the fridge down. Mm-hmm. Um, so an upright fridge in a caravan is the best option, uh, whereas the chest fridges are more for your four-wheel drives, uh, that type of thing. But even so, in the car, you know, you've still got to consider overnight staying, uh, putting the fridge on the gas. That's going to put your car up in fumes, so your chest fridge... Uh, that's a three-way fridge has to really be lifted out of the car and put somewhere else out of the way because I've, I've left my I've got a little fridge and I put it in the car and let it run on gas overnight. And not only was there a, a gas flame inside my car all night, which worried me, um, when I opened the door at the back at the, the next morning, I just about fell over with the gas fumes that filled the car up. I had to have the car opened out for mm. like an hour or so before we got we got rid of the smell. Yeah, right. Okay. So yeah, a carry-on fridge is better to be upright. Um, chest fridge is fine for camping, but yes, you do have to sort of get them out of the car and let them run outside. Cool. And I'm assuming the caravans that you can get, because I have seen a few around, like they are an actual caravan, but instead of having the fridge built into the kitchen, it's through like a little hutch on the side and it's like a a chest freezer that comes out on a drawer slide, like towards the front of the caravan. Those ones will be obviously appropriately ventilated and, and things like that. And usually would the fridge be included or do they just have that allowance for it um, with a fridge slide and you'd buy your own? Yeah, it depends on the model you're buying and the deal okay. you make with the um, with the dealer. But okay. most of the fridges that you find that are on a slide, they will be a compressor fridge. Yeah, you'll find that they won't be a, a three way fridge. The problem with the th- with that and the three way fridge is you've got to have a connected gas, which means you've got to have a long flexible gas tube client to go yeah. into a gas bottle. Mm-hmm. Now that in itself is a hazard because they can wear as you know, you're bouncing along the road, and the, the gas uh, line can wear and create a, a leak. You know, which is not good. So you don't generally have that type of fridge in a pull-out uh, slide. It'll pretty much always be a, um, a compressor fridge which runs off 12 volt quite happily and you can have uh, extension cords and they don't uh, cause a problem. So, so the, the three-way fridge then is vented, I'm just taking a bit of a step back to that gas fumes um, thing we are talking about before, which is a real danger with the byproduct of burning gas, like if you slept in that car. Uh, I love how safety you are. You're like yeah, safety, ben. safety, yeah. Well, I mean, you hear about people passing away all the time, but it's just no, such a no, simple thing, right? I'm saying. I, I love it. Stop, stop sleeping next to your gas fridge, but yeah. it's I think carbon monoxide. I think it is, and you'll just go to sleep and never wake up. We've touched on it in previous episodes. So, are those fridges actually vented, like required to be vented directly outside in some way? Is, is in a caravan, right? yes, there okay. are requirements. Um, as I said, there is actually a flue, a little chimney, if you want to call it that, that takes the gas fumes directly outside of the van. Um, the rest of the heat that's generated is not really harmful. There's just heat and can create a bit of a problem with the fridge operating. But the gas fumes mm. do have to be vented out. Now, the earlier model fridges, they didn't have those um, those flues on them. And, yes, they had vents, but the, the, the dispersion of the gas was pretty slow. And they sort of brought in some rules as the authorities, those that deal with that sort of thing, um, mean that the, the, the gas flame has to be fluid. It has to be directly sent outside of the van into the atmosphere. Okay. Um, the rest of the heat's not sort of such a problem. But, uh, yeah, that gas has to go. It's an important one for people installing their own fridges to make yeah. sure they vent it. So you've talked a little bit about the advantages and the disadvantages of the absorption fridges. What are the sort of comparative advantages or disadvantages of of your compressor fridge? Um, Well, I suppose if you look at a compressor fridge, that's running off a battery. Now, most compressor fridges, depending on their size, will draw, uh, they'll average between one and two amps. Some of them, the bigger ones, might draw more. 
But that's the problem. You've got to keep the battery power up to it. So if you've got a solar system set up that's putting in what the fridge takes out, you should be fine. Uh, if it's not, then you've got to rely on some stage running your engine. Now, if you're moving each day, that's not such a big deal. You sort of mm. just have the fridge running on the battery overnight um, and the next day you start up and drive off to another location, you're recharging the batteries. Um, that, that's the real disadvantage for them. I suppose the other thing is that um, with the absorption fridges, as I said, and I think, Ben, you mentioned too, you've got to keep them level. Um, if you've got them really crooked, if the van's parked on an angle, you might find they won't work properly because the fluid won't actually circulate around the tubes at the back properly. Yeah, right. So you don't okay. get that circulation of, of the gases and the liquid. Mm-hmm. Whereas a compressor fridge will sit at a funny angle and pump away quite happily. Okay. But the main thing with the, uh, the compressor fridge is just keeping the power up to it. Mm. Now, in most cases, that's not a problem. But um, if you're going to be long term camping at a uh, bush camp where there's no power, then yes, you've got to have a solar system or some sort of system to keep that battery tap topped up. Um, and that's really the only real disadvantage of the compressor type fridge, but it's usually very easily overcome. I guess if you're using an induction cooker and stuff too, it might be like the, what's, what other appliances you've got in the caravan might be a consideration there. Like you don't, yeah. you might not want to carry gas bottles just for your fridge if you're using induction cookers. Yeah. I was thinking be- we probably need to um, do a solar a caravan specific solar episode with Kev. I'll probably book that as our. What do you reckon, Kev? Reckon Our next caravanning with Kev episode, we'll talk about solar for yes, caravans. Yes, solar. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Booking it in. Okay. So, um, in terms of, I just thought, I just want to say that I think I might be a genius if uh, if I was an inventor. How good would it be to invent a like little platform? That's a self-leveling platform bear, bear here, that your three-way fridge sits on. <laughs> so wherever you are camping in your caravan, you can level your caravan as best as you can with your trucks and whatever, but you don't have to stress because the little self-leveling platform will have your three-way fridge tidy as the whole time. You don't have to stress. All right. Well, you've just you given reckon, your secret What do you reckon, away, Kevin? So- do you reckon that would be a genius idea? That would be pretty cool, but you've got to remember the fridge is built into a cabinet, so you're going to have to have the whole cabinet moving. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> Shoot me anyone, down at the no first one would hurdle. have thought of that before. <laughs> no, <laughs> not a bad um, idea. <laughs> Look, um, I'll another, work on it. I'll uh, work on it. Uh, another question for you, sort of related, but um, w- uh, so a caravan fridge has got a front opening door. A four wheel drive caravan or a, an off road caravan is going to be over a lot of bumps. Do, uh, do, do they lock close? And have you got any tricks and the tips? Doors, for, oh yes. Uh, and yeah, what about yeah, the stuff all, inside? All the doors. They should have a travel lock on them. Okay. Um, uh, just about every fridge that you put in the caravan should have some sort of uh, travel lock, either a little slide lock or a some of the early ones, a little pin that you drop in the top of your door into a little bracket right um, just to stop the thing from flying open, yes. What about tips and tricks for stuff inside so you don't end up with your chilli sauce in your ice cream or, or whatever? <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's all chili sauce in the freezer? I knew you'd pick me up on that. I was just supposed to <laughs> – my two favourite things is sweet chilli sauce and ice cream, so it's <laughs> not going to – I had that. chilli ice cream once. I wouldn't recommend it. All right, <laughs> okay. sweet, sweet chilli sauce goes with anything. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, so is so there any, any hot tip? <laughs> hot Vegemite ice cream. We're getting off track. <laughs> okay. Um, keeping uh, the fridge. So you, uh, I guess just being, it's common common sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. careful packaging. Um, everything in containers. Um, yeah. Bottles laying down. I suppose if you can. I mean, I, I made the mistake of putting some. I had some home brew when I put it later on the flat on the yeah. bottom of my fridge in my caravan, and we went over some rough roads, and when I Opened up, I realised I should never lay homebrew on its side on a floor. Yeah, one had popped open, there was stuff going everywhere, the other one was flat and it was a dreadful uh, mess. Oh, and you not the so not like you should really have to have it upright, you know, <laughs> all like your bottles upright, brewery, all yeah, very yeah. well sealed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, in terms of, say, you've got a second-hand caravan and it either, you know, has previously had a fridge in it or you're replacing the fridge that exists, is there any considerations with which one you go with? Like do, is the caravan, um, what am I, like in terms of compatibility, if you've got a caravan, there's a fridge cavity there, it needs to be replaced. Can you put whichever one you want in it? You can. Uh, you'll find that the compressor fridges are different dimensions than the um Three-way fridges. Okay. Uh, so you might need to consider altering the cabinet uh, that it actually goes into. Um, I suppose if you've got, depends which way you're going. If you're going to go from a compressor fridge to a gas fridge, or we'll call it a gas fridge just for ease of 
identifying. Yeah, of course. But if you're going to go to a gas fridge, then you have to consider that you've got to run a gas line to it as well. Uh, you've also got to look at the ventilation that's already in there and how it's got to be improved. As I said, you've got to flue the gas yeah. flame. So there's those sort of things to consider. To consider. If you're going the other way, not such a big deal. Obviously, you've got to remove the gas line, but that's not that hard. Mm. Um, but then you've got to sort of put in some sort of 12-volt um, system that can support the fridge with your batteries. So those are the things that you can do. I mean, ordering the cabinet is not such a big deal. It can be done. Yeah. But it's just that other things that you've got to consider uh, going one way or the other. So a gas line requires a gas fitter, Yeah, right? like I was going to ask. It has to be done with a, yeah. 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 It has to be done with an approved fitter, yes, that's yeah. right. A 12-volt is... You can is it you can do it yourself. Twelve volt, you can do it yourself. Yeah. There's no problem. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of um, yeah, in terms of that was going to be my next question in insulation options as as DIY professional. If you obviously you'll need to if you're putting in a gas fridge, you need to get that gas line done. But is a part of that whole installation process also making sure that ventilation and all of that sort of stuff is done by an improve, uh, approved installer, or could technically someone get away with doing it themselves? Like, what are the do you know what the regulations around it is? As far as the gas connection goes, it has to be done by someone who's approved. Um, as far as the rest of the insulation goes or the mounting in the cabinet, that, that can be done by yourself. Okay. Um, it just gets down to efficiency. If you do not vent the fridge, the gas fridge appropriately, it may not work appropriately. Mm. And this is the problem with a lot of the earlier model vans. They just stuck the fridge in the cabinet. Now, mm. I've got a little van at home that I'm doing up. That's a little thing built in the 70s. You open up the side cupboard and there's the fridge sitting there. You can see the whole thing. Yeah. And when it's running, uh, the, the bench top gets hot. You know, it doesn't, it's not vented properly, not going out. There's no gas on it. Not, that's another thing I've got to look at. But it's, it's got to be really sealed for efficiency. You've got to get that heat away from the, the, the sides and the top of the cabinet. So when we used to install in the new caravans that we were building, we would have, have it go into a basically like a little timber frame at the very back. So that when the vents were off, all you could see was the back of the fridge. You could see nothing else around it at all because yeah. the timber frame would butt right up against the body of the fridge. Mm-hmm. And even sometimes we would put insulation around so that the fridge sat in its own cabinet, completely mm. isolated from the rest of the furniture yep. and was insulated and vented appropriately. And we put some of these big fridges in vans that went out in the mine sites out in the deserts and we've never heard of them having problems with them not working properly okay, because that's the awesome. thing was vented correctly. And that's it's fairly crucial when these sort of – Three-way fridges are being installed, or gas fridges, that you vent the thing correctly. And so you were mentioning before, and like Ben raised it as well, that potentially they wouldn't be as efficient um, in hot weather. Would there be advantages to, as you were just saying then, when you're putting it in its own little designated cabinet section, adding additional insulation? Would that sort of help to offset any issues with that? You can. Um we have had fridges with insulation jammed down the side, just the, the bats, um, the, like the bats you find in your, your ceiling. Yep. Um, some people also put little fans in there. Uh, okay. I've seen people doing computer fans. Uh, mm. They can screw them in. They run off 12 volt. They're yep. very low voltage they can run. We can buy fridge fans. Mm-hmm. And the idea of those is to create the updraft so that you've got a bottom vent and a hot vent and, of course, you're getting the cooler air coming in the bottom. It's pushing the hotter air out at the top. Mm-hmm. So those sort of things can be done as well. There's lots of things you can do to help. We would also sometimes have holes in the floor under the fridge, yeah, right. cover it with um, mesh to stop any bugs and put a backward-facing scoop on uh, the, um, uh. on the uh, over it so that the whole idea is under the van is cooler and it would draw the cold air in or cooler air in from underneath the van and push it up through the, the, uh, the refrigeration tubes and push the heat out the top. And that used to work quite well too. That sounds like an actually genius idea. Yeah. What about ventilation? So they were on vans that went out to desert, so they were yeah, on yeah. pretty in very hot environments. Uh, normal okay. household, oh, sorry, normal recreational vans, you probably wouldn't need to go that far. Okay. okay. What, what about venting for the gas then? Is there actual regulation around what's required in terms of where that gas needs to be flued to? Does it go up? Oh, just I'm outside, assuming. I think. I'm not sure if the regulations um, or, or what regulation says about the flu. I know that you can't really have a gas appliance running inside. Now, I know you have a stove in there, but they're working on volume per square metres of atmosphere inside your van, that type of thing, and any vents in your roof or all those sort of things taken into consideration. But in a fridge cabinet, there probably are regulations. I couldn't tell you what they are, but uh, I would sort of recommend that, yes, that flu, that gas flame needs to be fluid outside for your own safety. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Obviously, people sleep in their caravans. Is there a difference between the compressor or the absorption in terms of noise level, do you think? There is a little bit, yes. You will hear uh, a compressor fridge start up through the night. I hear mine. Um, it's just a low hum. It's not a, a big rattle or anything Nothing like this. crazy, yeah. Hum. They sound no different than your fridge at home. Yep. Would sound. It's the same, exactly the same sort of principle. It's just a smaller compressor. Uh, with the uh, three-way fridge, of course, you'll hear nothing. Not a thing. Okay. The only the only thing you might hear, which is not a good sign, is a bubbling sound. Okay. If you can hear a bubbling sound coming out of your fridge, then it's on its way out. It means that there's a blockage and it's trying to force the gases, the the ammonia solution through a tiny hole because they they can actually create, if you want to call it a plug, I suppose, a rust plug, if they're not used frequently and okay. the, the stuff will boil and bubble and pop through the little hole and it will slow the fridge down. So if you hear bubbling in your gas fridge, it's time to have it looked at um, uh, okay. or even changed because it's on its way out. But uh, that's the only sound. But I say it's the sound you don't really want to hear. In most cases, 99% of the time you hear nothing at all. You just mentioned um, if they're not used frequently. If you're someone who's maybe only getting away in your van every six months or so, if you've got your van plugged in, in, in the carport or wherever it's stored, it doesn't have to run on, on gas. It could just run on 240 and it would be okay for the fridge to keep running and, and that that's enough. So you wouldn't be turning your fridge off between trips. It, 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 well, as I say, I've also got a little tiny um, gas camping fridge, a um, little chest fridge. Yeah. And I run that about every oh, five to six months, I suppose. Okay. I'll take it out and just plug it into power in the garage, leave it running for a day make sure that the element's getting warm at the back and I can put my hand inside. Yes, it's getting cold. That means it's working okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you left it for a year or so, that may not be so okay because, okay. as I said, the, the ammonia solution uh, is corrosive and the, the downside is that they do rust these tubes out from the inside out. So if you could sort of smell ammonia when it's running or mm -hmm. hear this bubbling sound or the fridge isn't working properly, the fridge is probably just about at the end of its life. Okay. So you don't have the same sort of issues with a compressor fridge, though. With the, it's no. a different solution, isn't it? And the compressor works differently than the absorption in a – it's a transfer from liquid to gas and that energy release when that – or the other way around, I don't know, it's science. And that it's, the energy is released in the form of um, heat when it exchanges from liquid to gas. That's my understanding of it. And it requires a compressor to, to make those changes mm, happen. Do that, yeah. Shouldn't have any problems. I still run my compressor fridge uh, in my caravan at least every four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, more so to use up the battery. I've got a solar panel on the roof. Oh, and yeah, it, keep your battery healthy. Telling me my batteries are completely full. Mm -hmm. So I think, well, I'll use some of the battery power, get the system working, run the fridge for a day or two, yep. and, um, and then I'll turn it off again and leave it mm -hmm. again for a while. So I think with any of these sort of things, occasional use doesn't do it any harm at all. It's yeah. really good to keep it using. Um, stops anything from seizing up keeps everything lubricated in the motors and things that are there and keeps the gases moving. So I think it's always a good idea to run your fridge at least uh, perhaps six months, three months, just for a day and just make sure it's all working. Just a bit of maintenance. Cool. Okay, so wrapping up, Kev, if you are a person who has just bought a caravan and you want to put a fridge in, can you give us a quick bulletproof of the things to consider to help them make a, div a choice? Because there might be some people listening to this going, oh, okay, that's all great, but I still don't know what what I should choose. What's you, your sort of quick summary of uh, to help people make up their mind? Um, that's a good question. I suppose if you're, if you're buying a new fridge, a new van, and they say what kind of fridge do you want, um, it depends what else comes with the fridge. As I said, if it comes with the battery and the solar panel on the top, I would suggest a compressor fridge uh, would be your best option, mostly because it will run in any temperature. Mm -hmm. It will run at crazy angles. Yes, you will hear it whirring at night, but if you're like me, a little bit deaf, it doesn't worry you so much, <laughs> then you know it's not such a bad thing and it keeps everything cold. The freezer works all the time. It's really good. Mm -hmm. But if you like the idea of having different fuel choices, having the gas, uh, if you don't want to go to the trouble of trying to worry about batteries, uh, I mean, a gas fridge will run on a standard gas bottle for, for weeks, weeks okay. and weeks. It takes such a tiny foam. So if you're the person that wants to not worry about solar panels or batteries or worry about monitoring voltage, um, then, yes, go for a three-way fridge, go for a gas fridge and just adjust your your fuel modes as to, as to what you do. As I said, if they're installed correctly, they'll work pretty well. You won't have any problems. So it's really a choice of what you as a buyer would perhaps want to get out of your fridge. 
Okay. And does, does the old you get what you pay for rule sort of apply to caravan fridges? I mean, I'm assuming there's cheap ones and expensive ones and you get... The most know. common one uh, these days are Dometic fridges. Now, they used to be called, uh, well, Dometic bought out Waco. Waco um, was a different company altogether. Dometic used to have Electrolux and Electrolux Leisure or Electrolux RV. It all went through all these different name changes until it became Dometic. Now, Dometic and Waco. So, if you're buying a Waco fridge, you're buying a Dometic fridge, basically, mm-hmm. or yep. vice versa. Um, but your Wacos, you tend to stick with your 12 volt type of fridges. Mm-hmm. Um, and your Dometic, they tend to be your three way type of fridges. Right. Okay. But still, as I say, they all come under the one name now. But yep. they're the, by far the most popular choice. I probably would stick with that sort of brand name. Okay. Um, Dometic are, are renowned around the world as one of the best types of filter fridges you can get. Um, there, probably, there are other cheaper brands on the market you can get that they're the same system I think it's down to how the cabinet's put together how well the insulation is the features of the fridge those sort of things okay um, but yeah it's it's stick with the well-known brands I would suggest then you know what you're getting and they've got a good backup of, um, of uh, warranties uh, and parts if you need them too okay you got um, Bushman's I think do an upright one as well Bushman's do an upright uh, one I don't know yeah. if Eng- Engel do any and I'm not sure if Mike Coleman are in that I have they heard, do? yeah, I have heard about Engel doing upright ones, but we don't we don't carry them. Yeah, and I don't think they've been could. around for some time. They, they're just as good. The Engel, they're they're a very reliable fridge. They're very good okay. fridge Engels. Uh, as I said, the all of the popular brand Bushman you mentioned, uh, a lot goes down to the type of compressor they use in the electric fridges. It's either a Danfoss or Seacop, I think they're now called, mm-hmm. which is probably a world um, beta as far as compressors go. They're used in a lot of household fridges too. So if you've got a, a fridge and you're looking at it and they say, oh, this has got this particular type of compressor in it and you've never heard of it, then perhaps you might want to think, hmm, you know, will I, won't I? You've got to decide that. You probably pay less. But, yes, as you say, you get what you pay for these days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Compressors are hard on the fridge, eh? Yeah. Cool. Thanks, I'm all, Kev. I'm all clued up. If I ever buy a caravan, yeah. I'm good for a fridge. I yeah. have learned a lot in this episode, actually, so I appreciate your never-ending caravan wisdom. <laughs> Can I just point out one more thing too? Yeah, um, a lot of people get, uh, when they're starting up their fridge, first of all, they will put warm food in it, mm, you know, okay. out of the cup or whatever. It's always a good idea to put cold food in. It's a bit like okay. your ice boxes. If you start with something cold in there, it'll stay cold for long and the fridges are no different. If you put cold food into any type of fridge, whether it's the three-way fridge or the compressor fridge, it doesn't have to work hard to get rid of that heat to start making things cool. Yeah. Uh, and it's just common sense. Start with something cold. And just one other thing, when you're using a chest fridge, people get concerned if you open the door, the lid of the chest, all the cold will come out. Cold drops to the bottom. It falls. Mm. It will not flow out the top of the, the chest fridge unless there is movement. Wind or anything like that will blow the cold out. Mm. In most cases, you open up a chest fridge, it'll stay cold in there for ages. You look at the fridges and freezers in the shop, they don't have lids on them, you know, because yeah. the cold sits in the bottom yeah. and they stay frozen and they circulate yeah. over the top or your, your camping fridges are the same. And that's whether it's a a, um, a three-way fridge or a compressor fridge, the same thing. But as far as the door goes, you open the door, cold's going to come out one way or the other. It's to yeah. then replace that cold. So just a mm. few things to consider. I think that awesome. putting the cold stuff in the fridge is a really good tip. I know I've tried to drop the temperature of my 12-volt fridge when I was camping once over a few days from like five degrees down to four, but asking a 12-volt fridge to pull a fridge full of stuff down one degree, mm. it just ran and ran and ran and ran all the time. It's a lot mm. of work, whereas if I just put everything in it sort of two degrees to start with, it's easier to maintain it at that degree. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Thanks so much, Kev. Um, we will see you again in another couple of weeks, I reckon, to um, talk solar, solar for caravans looking now. Forward yeah, that sure. no so looking forward to that one. Have a really okay, good fine. rest of your week. Yeah. Thanks, yes. Kev. Cool. You too. Thanks very much. You, mate. All right. Hopefully that was as informative for other people as it was for me because mm. I did learn quite a fair bit on that. Yep. I, I didn't know had, much about three-way I fridges, gas fridges. I wouldn't have had any idea. Yep, only a little bit. Yeah, totally. That was cool. Cool. No awesome. worries. Well, we will see you next week for another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Take it easy in the meantime. Uh, maybe see if you can get away camping. I always try to. Yeah. yeah. I've got a few trips coming up, short ones. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks. See you Catch you later. Time. Bye.